Hey guys, welcome back to Resume Gaming. My name is Marcus, and today we are going to be bringing you the Affliction Warlock. So a lot has changed with the Affliction Warlock back back when uh, Legion first came out uh, into 7.1.5. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about specific uh, stat priorities, rotations, uh, talents, artifact traits, or you name it, we're going to go over it. So, with Affliction Warlock, it's very important that your mastery is between 110 to 125. Your mastery increases your damage done uh, by your dots, all five of them, all four of them, by however much mastery you have. So, for example, I have 116% mastery, which means I'm going to have 116% more damage done through all of my dots. All right, it's very important. Your next stat you want to gear up is crit. Crit is greater than or equal to haste, followed by intellect, and then versatility. Anything after that is just bonus. So uh, from there, you can keep stacking more mastery. Uh, so if you got your crit and your haste like at 20, 25, 30, and your mastery is at 120, 130, you can keep gearing your mastery. Uh, we'll talk about artifact next. So your artifact, I'm going to outline a couple of very important traits that you need to be aware of what they do and how to manage them. First and foremost, our artifact is Reap Souls. So whenever we utilize Reap Souls, it's going to increase our damage dealt by 10% for however many souls we reap. So you can let this thing stack up to 12 and then Reap Souls, then you get 120 seconds out of it. So pretty strong. I really, really, really like Reap Souls. Uh, also, you use two shadows and one blood uh, artifact relic. Typically, you want to go for the agony or the corruption relics. If you can't get those, the straight damage done by shadow or the straight damage done by agony and corruption, uh, both uh, is also a good one to pick. So, starting off with a couple of these important artifact traits here. So we've got Fatal Echo. So whenever Unstable Affliction expires, it has a 6% chance to reapply itself. This means that uh, if our Unstable Affliction falls off, it can reinstate itself on the target, which means we can keep draining life. I'll explain uh, our rotations here in a few minutes, but just know that Unstable Affliction will in fact have a chance at reapplying itself uh, to, the, to the target. Also, uh, each time agony and corruption deal damage has a 10% chance to cause your next unstable affliction to deal uh, a certain amount of damage, stacking up to five times. It's very important. I won't talk about it too much, but just know that it does exist and it is important. Uh, and then, of course, when I talk about our AOE rotation, Harvester of Souls will be very important as well as uh, our Soul Flame. But for now, uh, Wrath, Wrath of Corruption, or Consumption, rather, it, after you kill a target, it uh, will give you a small buff, which will stack up to five times, which increases your damage over time effects again. So very important stuff to know about your gold traits. I will leave a quick little picture here of the traits you should gather first if you're just now leveling an Affliction Warlock and you're coming to the guide just to see kind of what's up. So uh, there you go. That is what you should be uh, getting for your traits first and foremost. So moving on to their talents. Malefic Grasp is more or less your go-to. I'm going to talk about the single target talents. If you're interested in a talent overview, uh, I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to talk about single target talents versus AOE target talents and uh, what's viable and stuff like that. So Malefic Grasp is while channeling Jane's Drain Soul, your damage over time effects deal 70% increased damage, which is very strong. All right, this talent is a very good talent. Next up is Contagion. You deal 18% increased damage to targets afflicted by your unstable affliction. So technically you get about 88% uh, plus 90 or plus another 10%. So that brings up to about 98% extra damage done plus whatever our mastery is. So now you can see kind of how our damage is really ramping up. Uh, absolute Corruption is also viable. I'll talk about when and why. But Corruption is a permanent dot and will deal 25% increased damage uh, to the target. Uh, 45 is talent, 45 row is all survivability. It's your choice, whatever you want. Uh, Siphon Life is the next one in the tier that you should pick for single target. It is another dot which you have to manage, but it does a lot of damage and will heal you in the process. Uh, talent 75, you take Burning Rush for PvE. It's just, it's way better than the other two choices. Grimoire Supremacy is the go to. Um, it gives a little buff to our pets. I will explain why. 
And then Soul Effigy, Phantom Singularity, Soul Conduit. We're going to be talking about Soul Effigy and Soul Conduit for single target. Soul Effigy is a, a little thing that binds to your target, and you dot that up as well as your target, and it will transfer damage between the two targets. And then Soul Conduit is a Soul Shard generator. Each time you spend a Soul Shard, it has 20% chance to then be refunded, so it's like you never lost a Soul Shard to begin with. So, that being said, I right now have the current single target talent set up. Uh, right now, this is the optimal talent set up for any main single target fight like Croesus or Ursoc or uh, Triliax, different things like that. This is the, the talents that you more or less want to run. So, starting with our rotation, it's obviously it's very important because of Malefic Grasp that we keep Drain Soul on our target as much as humanly possible. Anytime we're not draining soul, we're not taking advantage of that 70% increased damage, which is huge. It is huge. So anytime you can stop, and even if it's just like a little second uh, for a tick of drained soul to, to get on the target, that's 70% damage that you wouldn't have normally gotten. The add-ons I use are LVI uh, details, uh, and that's about it. I use Deadly Boss mods. If you're interested in the add-on setup and tutorial or uh, kind of how I have mine configured, leave a comment down below. We'll get to that. But for now, just know that Drain Soul, each time it ticks, will deal 70% increased damage to all your dots. So then Contagion, when we have Drain Soul up and Contagion and Malefic Grasp, that's when we deal our most damage. So you want to start off with Agony, then Corruption, then Siphon Life, and then you want to reap, uh, reap souls after you use two unstable afflictions. So we'll do one, two, tell our pet to attack, and then we can start draining. So now you see our damage is really ramping up really fast. Whatever you do in your rotation, no matter where you're at or, or what you're, hit, you're targeting, you always want to make sure that you never let Agony fall off. So Agony ramps up to 10. You'll see a little timer here or up here on the boss. Uh, it's at 6, 7, 8. Once it's at 10, it is now dealing its full damage. And you want to make sure that it's going to keep dealing its full damage throughout the duration of the fight. So Unstable Affliction uh, and Agony are the two that you want to try to maintain the most uptime on. I'll talk about Corruption and Siphon Life in a little bit, but just know that they're not as important to have stay on your target. It is Agony and Unstable Affliction. You want to make sure that those stay on your target as much as possible. So, simply because our Agony has so much ramp up time, we want to make sure that that is our priority. The next priority is Unstable Affliction for the fact that we are trying to get our 18% increased damage up as much as possible. Now, at, at lower gear levels, at even at middle mid gear levels, I'm talking like Raid Finder, like normal Nighthold, it is not possible to keep up Unstable Affliction up all the time. It won't be until you get your 4 set bonus from Nighthold that you can start to continue to get more and more uptime on your Unstable Affliction. Your Soul Shards just won't allow it, unfortunately. So, because each time you cast Unstable Affliction, you utilize one of the Soul Shards. So, a normal rotation is Agony, Corruption, Siphon, Life, Unstable Affliction, once, twice, reap, drain. And then our pet will attack. Drain, 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 drain. So there will be a time when the Unstable Affliction is going to reset itself based on our artifact trait that I mentioned earlier. In the event that that happens, Corruption and Siphon Life are indeed going to fall off. You need to keep draining life until those Unstable Afflictions run out. Because if you don't, uh, then you're not going to get utilize your extra 18% on drain. So you want to drain, 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 drain. I'll try to get this pro to proc so you can kind of see the timings. So we couldn't get one to proc there, so that's okay. But if indeed it does reset, just keep draining. Keep draining until agony is about to fall off, because once agony is about to fall off, that's when you need to stop, reset agony. Don't worry about draining after that, unless the unstable re resets again while you're resetting agony. Then drain again. But otherwise, it's just maintain agony all the time, no matter what. Next, unstable affliction. If it's still on your target when your two dots fall off, your corruption and your siphon life, then keep training. Otherwise, reset your dots. Very simple rotation. It sounds complicated, but it, it really isn't. It's just it's a lot of monitoring your dots, know when to kind of reset your dots, know when to just 
keep draining your life, etc. So what happens then when we utilize our agony because it also has a chance to generate soul shards as well. So that's why uh, it is important to also keep it up on the target at all times because it's your soul shard generator. What happens then when we start a rotation with five soul shards? So if you're lucky enough to pull the boss when you're at five, you immediately roll into the fight. And what I do is I'll unstable three times because I have the extra, I'll have the extra unstables. And then I'll reap, so reap souls and then I'll drain, 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 drain until they all fall off. And then I reset all my dots. And then I unstable twice because I didn't, I didn't generate enough for the third one. And then I'll drain, 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 drain. And then keep that trend going. So you see right now I'm at 500 and was that 550k DPS and I'm just I'm just doing a basic rotation. This is nothing fancy. I'm not trying to squeeze everything out. Your soul shard usage and generation is completely up to you. So like right now I'm about to only have two. So I could use cast two unstables, but instead I'm only going to cast one. I'm going to play more conservative and I'm going to hope that another soul shard will generate. It didn't. All my stuff fell off, so I'm going to reapply my dots. I'm going to life tap before I unstable. I'm going to unstable once. Drain. You never want to life tap after you unstable. Because if you do, then you effectively waste it. So now I have two. I can use two again and reap souls and drain. So you see I used two unstables and my reap did not... Or I'm sorry, I used two unstables and my soul shard reset. So I'll keep draining here. And honestly, this is this is it. It's it's not too hard at all. You just keep keep going through. Just watch your unstable affliction. If it resets, just keep draining. I'll do one again. I'll drain for a while. I'm out of mana, which is not a good thing. Keep my dots up. I'll life tap again. Unstable two times. Reap, drain. And you can re repeat this rotation forever if you wanted to. You always have enough soul shards for this. It's not until you require a little bit extra, a little bit extra burst from like let's say, let's say a boss is in bet lower than 20%, right? And you're trying to hurry up and kill it. Then I'll I'll hurry up and I'll do three, right? So you just you keep draining. So one of my soul shards or unstables just reset right here. So I'm gonna keep draining. All my dots fell off except agony so I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh him now life tap I'm gonna drain once I ha I got lucky with two of the soul conduit procs and you see my unstable uh, actually reset as my drain finish and I was just gonna go reapply my dots I missed out on extra DPS just there so that is literally the entire single target process with the warlock it is so easy but it is so rewarding it rewards the highest outcome for your dots the only other thing you can do to change it is you can take soul effigy instead and i'll sh i'll show you what uh what soul effigy does real quick soul effigy let me get full mana here we'll put a target right next to you here which i usually set as focus then after that so you, what you want to do is you want to dot up your main guy. Then you want to dot soul effigy with agony only. And then unstable, unstable, and drain. And you just kind of want to watch that agony. You want to make sure it never falls off. So I'll reset my dots here. I'll go to my soul conduit and reset it. I'm going to blow a little bit extra soul shards here because I have, I have them. And I'm just going to drain, 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 drain. So this one is a little bit different priority because obviously we're watching two agonies now. You want to keep everything up. And you want to just kind of keep it going. The longer the fight, the more damage this yields. So it is better for like a DPS check like Krosis or Tychondrius or something along those lines. You could try to manage uh, more dots on this if you wanted to. And I'll talk about other dots that you could use with it. 
in just a sec. We're just gonna finish this little rotation and we'll stop. So the other thing you could do with this is uh, uh, absolute corruption. So at absolute corruption, it, uh, it puts less emphasis on your unstable affliction, but more emphasis on corruption. What this means then is that when we go to do single target, oops, we can put two dots here instead of just the one because absolute corruption is going to make this corruption stay forever. And now you're going to drain a little bit, refresh agony right before it falls off, refresh agony here, and now we can kind of watch this. And then just keep DPSing, just keep DPSing. Refresh, refresh. And then this also generates a lot of soul shards, so you can also dump as much as you want then once, it, once the time does indeed come up. So it, it really just depends on, on your kind of play style, what you like to manage. If you have an add-on like a weak auras or tell me when, that helps you keep track of the dots that you're trying to, to reapply. Um, it really just depends on your play style. I particularly don't like Soul Effigy because it's just one more thing that I have to keep track of. And when you play Affliction, you already have to keep track of so many different things. So I, just, I usually just stick to the Soul Conduit talent and I won't mess with Soul Effigy. So that is a basic guide to your single target. We're going to cut away here in just a sec and talk about some AoE. All right. All right, guys. So switching from our single target to AoE now. We want to remove our Doom Guard pet and change for the Infernal. So the Infernal is going to provide us with a couple of things. Uh, first off, he's got a Flame Aura that uh, deals damage to multiple enemies around. So I will show you that here. And he also has an AoE stun, which is really nice if you have a legendary like Sefu's Secret uh, or something along those lines. So as you can see, he's doing his little thing. He's, he's pounding away at those little imps over there. And uh, we're going to call him back for a second. So this is currently uh, one of the best. It is not the only AoE talent choice you can pick, but it's currently one of the best. Is Absolute Corruption, Sow the Seeds, and Phantom Singularity. So with these three dots, or three talents alone, you can do massive AoE damage. So this is typically what I run in a Mythic Plus, uh, or something along those lines. Sometimes I'll take Soul Conduit if I'm running a higher Mythic Plus where like bosses and stuff are going to stay alive a little longer than normal but Phantom Singularity is also a very good AoE talent. More survivability than usual, uh, usually really good for PvP but also very good for AoE here in this situation, I'll tell you why. So Phantom Singularity puts a dot that's going to deal 642,000 yeah, 640, damage over 13 seconds but it also does damage to everyone around. So this damage dealing dot will do millions of damage. The next thing is, so the seeds here is going to spread to two other enemies uh, nearby. So when one blows up, they all blow up, and Seed of Corruption, as a quick refresher, will detonate once a target takes 118,000 damage, and we'll talk about kind of the best ways to maximize that. Uh, and then the other thing is Absolute Corruption, which I just showed you on the single target uh, training dummy. Uh, corruption will stay on the target. So the reason we do that is it's one less thing to worry about and it's going to deal 25% more damage. We're not going to do uh, agony too much more. However, in a higher mythic plus where you know things are going to stay alive a little bit longer, you can get away with using Wrath and Agony as well. So Wrath and Agony will make it uh, so that your Agony deals uh, twice as much damage as usual. So, But for now, we're going to just pick Malefic Grasp uh, even though you don't really drain too much uh, health from AoE. It's more for like a, a single target for bosses sort of thing. So what we do is we are going to send our pet in. We're going to open with Seed of Corruption. We are going to agony as many targets as we can. So in this case, we are going to agony them all. And then we are going to Phantom Singularity and then drain until it blows up. Seed of Corruption. Drain until it blows up. Agony. Agony, Agony, Agony. We're going to stun for added effect. We're going to reap souls. We're going to drain. We're going to seed. We're going to drain. We're going to seed. And then we're going to seed. We're going to seed. So all of our stuff is, is dealing enough damage now where we can just continuously seed. We're going to reapply our Agony. We don't want them to fall off if we can help it. And we are going to seed, 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 seed again. And we can just keep casting it. By the time we're done casting it, they'll all have blown up.
Gonna reapply some agony here. Keep all those rolling. Gonna reap again. Seed, 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 seed. By now my phantom singularity is almost back up. We're gonna reapply these agonies. We wanna generate more soul shards if we can. Phantom singularity is back up, so we're gonna drain a little bit. Keep up the charades here with this with the seed as long as we can. Reapply our agonies. And then just keep this keep this up as long as you can. This is uh, the best four target rotation as well. I'm gonna seed one more time, then we're gonna reapply some agonies. And then just keep this up. I didn't have to reapply just yet, but we're going to. Try to buy some time for some more soul shards. By this time, my Phantom Singularity is almost back, so in the event that we run out, we'll just drain a little bit until we can get some more shards back. And then our Phantom Singularity is back up off cooldown, we can keep casting that. Drain a little bit. Refresh our Agonies. Boom, we got those refreshed. Keep doing it, it's rinse and repeat. Honestly, it's these rotations really aren't too bad. But then the question is, what happens if you don't have to sow the seeds? What happens then? Uh, so if you are in a siphon life scenario, let's say, let's say you have a single target uh, set up and you're trying to do AOE, what do you do then? Let me clear these corruptions off real quick so that we can see damage real time instead of bonus damage. Oh, come back to me. All right, so once these tick off, we'll, we'll go over a rotation. It's a little bit more clunky and it requires a lot more reflexes than your typical uh, absolute corruption, so the seeds phantom singularity uh, talent spec. So what we wanna do from here is we wanna start off again with seed of the corruption. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do agony, agony, agony again all across the board as much as we can. I put siphon life here. We're gonna drain. We're gonna siphon life everything. We're gonna squeeze in another seed. And we're gonna reapply agony. And as you can see, we can kind of keep our dots up, just kind of keep rolling. By the time you do Siphon Life, you can keep going. You can roll this a couple of times and then reapply your Agony. Uh, you lost a Corruption there. And then I'm going to see it again and then I'm going to reapply Siphon Life to everything. So it's kind of just jumbling around and kind of just making sure your dots stay up as much as possible, especially your agony. You always want those to stay up as much as humanly possible for the reasons I mentioned earlier. But this, this rotation is, is a little harder in the fact that you can't exactly keep all your dots up all the time. And it requires a lot more kind of focus when you're actually doing it. Uh, the main thing again though is just making sure that agony is on as much as possible and just don't focus on burning your soul shards. If you wanna just keep corruption and agony up, you can do that too, it, they, it both works. Just make sure that you always have both the dots on. Uh, the one thing about the uh, corruption is that your seed of corruption is going to always reapply that. So both ways work. However you're more comfortable, if you wanna track three dots, you're gonna have a slightly higher output but if you want to just get by with the two dots, you certainly can do that. They're both viable. Uh, but certainly having a full AoE setup is going to be way more beneficial than having the single target setup that you see here. But it is make sure to summon the proper pet because that is going to give you a little bit more extra damage as well to all the AoE targets. So. Guys, that is the Warlock tutorial for 715. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing. We're going to do more tutorials like this uh, in the future, especially when 7.2 comes out, uh, when we get better gear in Nighthold. I'm going to talk about gearing in the next video, uh, what you should look for, what tiers should you be getting, uh, different things like that. So if you're interested in the next, next videos, you can certainly subscribe and be notified when I upload them. So until next time, guys, that's when we resume gaming. I hope to see you again soon.